I think you will like this. So if you're interested in uh, doing web development with Go, there's a great code pathway. GitHub goes to 11, Golang Web Dev. And we've been doing a whole bunch of videos about how to do that. And you could go to uh, my, well, you'd go to YouTube, Todd McLeod. And then when you came here, you would look at my playlists. And then in my playlist, videos corresponding to all this is in Golang Web Programming Fall 2016. Though there's some good ones here in Tracks to Code By also. And uh, what else do I want to say? Videos, code. Oh, you should check out uh, Todd McLeod Udemy because uh, I'm putting together, I create, finished um, this great uh, HTML CSS course. It's like the best in the world ever. That's why I created it. The outline for this course is 300 pages long. Like, just think about that for a second. The course outline is 300 pages long. It's like super comprehensive, but it covers everything that you need to know for modern web dev on the front end side. And, uh, and then I'm going to have a new uh, Go web dev course coming up soon. So that's what I wanted to say. All right, so now forwards and onwards, I want to show you how to take this web page right here. Whoa, beautiful. And deploy it to the web so that you could like have a domain with a website and it's live. I'm going to show you that in less than 10 minutes. Do I have your interest or do you just want to go home? She just wants to go home. Ken? Can you show us again next week though? When yeah, I'll show you again next week. Friends. Yeah, when, when you're fresh. All right, so to do that, we have just finished up with third party serve monks with Julian Schmidt. There's, there's hands on example right here. And we're going to come back to serving files and see how to actually serve images and things like that. And uh, there's more hands-on examples, and then there's the not found handler, and there's a little project example of how I structured a project recently with some friends, and then we have this, which is where we're at right now. So we have a few things to look to fill in next week when we get together, but I just thought this is exciting and it's fun to see. So here are the directions for deploying to Google Cloud. So these are the clear steps. You want to install Google App Engine. There's the link for it. So when you go to Google Cloud, I'll take a little educational tour. When you go to Google, Google Cloud, go to products. They have different products here. And so there's three main general categories people talk about, and it's infrastructure as a service, IaaS. It's platform as a service, PaaS. <laughs> and it's software as a service, SaaS. Infrastructure as a service means Somebody's got a computer, some hardware somewhere, doesn't even have an operating system on it, and they say, here's how you can connect to it with SSH. And you could terminal in, and you could start deploying operating systems and building that machine up from the ground up and do whatever you want to it. And that's buying hardware to use. That's infrastructure as a service. So you could buy that at Google. Or you could use platform as a service which already has some functionality built into it. At a basic level, it might just have the operating system, but Google App Engine has the operating system and other stuff already built, ready to go. So we go to View App Engine Docs, and we could use different languages to deploy to App Engine. We're going to use Go. There's the flexible environment, which leans more towards IaaS, Infrastructure as a Service, where you have ability to you know, do more work yourself, which means you got to do more work yourself. Or there's just the standard environment. So we're going to go to that one. And then we're going to go into Quick Start. So here are like all the documentation to explain how to use it. But then here's Quick Start. And Quick Start, right, the first thing it says is download the SDK. And that's what I'm telling you to do. Download Google App Engine, the SDK. So you will download that to your computer. You just download it to your computer. If you're on Windows, you put it in C, colon, backslash, and then the folder right there, Go App Engine. If you're on a Mac, I recommend putting it in
user usr forward slash local and then you can see mine's right there you then have to set an environment variable saying this is where app engine is at and so my environment variable for that is echo dollar path I don't know where's my environment variable for that here we go let's write the very first one user local go app engine okay so set that environment variable for app engine and then you also need to have Python installed so if you're on Mac already done and it needs to be Python version 2.7 point something. So you need Python 2.7 something. If that, when you do Python v at the terminal and you get three, you gotta figure out how to get it back to two, which means uninstalling the three and putting on the two or putting the two on and changing your path variable so it runs the two. And uh, that's the problem with Python, right? Like Guido, whoever he is, said, version two sucks so bad, I'm throwing it away, I'm breaking backwards compatibility, and we're gonna to go to version three. Yet everybody had so much code base in version two, they didn't follow him. So the guy who created the language said, version two sucks too much to use, yet everybody's written a bunch of code in it, so they stuck with it. I don't know, that's my take on it. Why else would he break backwards compatibility? I don't wanna hear reasons. So that's uh, that's make sure Python is installed, Python-V. Configure environment path variables, so you might need to set up path variables for Python. If you install Python and say Python is in this location. Uh, and then we do Google Developer Console. So we're just going to go Google Developer Console. And then click Google Cloud Console, that sounds good. Console developers Google.com. Go to this one. Google Cloud Platform, and then up here you create a project. So when you create a project, it'll give you a project ID. Here's my project ID. All right, and so I could copy that project ID. And then the next step is I get that project ID, and I update the app YAML project uh, file with your project ID. So on App Engine, there's a few changes we make to our code. One of them is that we include an app YAML file, okay? And so in that app YAML file, you just drop that project ID right there. That's all you need to change. Drop your project ID right there. The other thing you need to change is an index. There's no longer any func main. Because App Engine's using func main, you have to put everything in func init, okay? So you drop everything in Funkinet and you no longer have to do listen and serve because it's going to serve it from, from its main, that's App Engine. So you don't do listen and serve, you just do HTTP handle stuff. And you stick it all into a net. So it initializes all those routes. And that's it, right? And then we're ready to deploy. So to deploy, we drop that in. Okay, so that's kind of a crazy looking thing. But if you look at this quick start guide, it comes from right there. And there's slightly shorter ways you could do that. So, but that's the like comprehensive method. So now we'll do deploy that. So I'm going to go get that URL, copy, and then I'm going to get my project ID. Copy my project ID and I'm going to drop that in that right here. And I'm going to copy that and I'm going to come here. And before I deploy the one we just saw at the beginning, that is in a folder 02702. Boy, you guys just hit the wall fast tonight. 27. I'm going to deploy what's in 01. It's a surprise website. So now it's going to run for 20 seconds. And it's like looking at all the code and it just pushed it all up. And it told me I don't have the most current version of the SDK and I should go get it. And it's deploying. Starting deployment. 
And checking if deployment succeeded, sweet. Checking if it's serving, sweet. And now I could go to last step here. Uh, your project ID .appspot .com. So here's an example. That's not on the web. I don't know if you guys read Jonathan Livingston Siegel. This is a Hollywood take update on the classic book by Richard Bach. And it's John Jonathan Livingston Siegel returns. And he's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can look up pricing and see, you know, how much do you get for free and at what point do you have to start paying. But um, the pricing is very competitive with AWS, Amazon Web Services. And uh, I've never, on my free stuff I use in classes and things like that, or even on this one, Fresno Radon Mitigation, right, which is for my cousin's uh, and mine business on radon testing and mitigation. You know, we've never had to pay anything because we don't get any traffic. <laughs> so, you know, we get a little bit of traffic, but nothing that puts us in the pay category. So you can just check out the pricing. So uh, last thing I want to show you is how do you wire that up with a domain. You go to Google Domains to buy your domain. And then once you bought your domain, you go into your, go your domains and you say, I want to configure the DNS on that. And then down here, you just say, hey, this is an App Engine project. Point this domain to that App Engine project ID. That domain to the same ID. And so if anybody goes to those, it's all configured, and that's it. Super easy. So that's, uh, that is everything for deploying your project. And so just to show you the, the deploy difference, right, I'll do a CD, go into the other folder, and then deploy that one. So I'm deploying that other folder now to that project on App Engine, starting deploying that. <coughs> and you'll see a different one deployed here in a second. So that's why I put two in, just so you could see, oh yeah, one went up, the other one went up. Well, that's not the page. Done, 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 done. It's pretty cool, huh? Relatively painless, now that I've sifted through all the documentation for you. Hours of my life, I kid you not. All right, Nina looks like she's going to need a ride home.